Hi, I'm Dr. Bord von der, I'm a lead scientist at Absolute Black Science Lab. Since our first video on hollow cage, comparing different cages and comparing the drive-train friction data, we've received a lot of comments and questions regarding the device we're using for this purpose. We've received a lot of questions regarding the accuracy and the repeatability of the data coming out of the device. So we decided we're going to make a technical presentation covering all the aspects that need to be considered when designing such a device. So let's head over to a presentation and let's see the details of the device itself. Welcome to the technical presentation on drivetrain friction assessment. We're going to cover some of the key technical aspects that need to be considered during the development of a device or a methodology to assess the friction coming from a drivetrain. Now, before we continue, we first need to clarify some of the terminology that's been used and often misused among uh, the general audience. So, um, the two terms that uh, people often mistaken are accuracy and repeatability. Now, the absolute accuracy, it actually refers to the closeness of a measured value to a standard. For example, if you have a, a kitchen scale or a, a weight scale, um, this scale can only be accurate to some degree. For example, it often, um, let's say it's accurate up to one kilogram, um, and that up to one kilogram, it means to the international prototype kilogram. So basically, the, uh, the number when you step on the scale only reflects to some extent the accuracy. If you would put the real international prototype kilogram on that scale, um, you would get a reading somewhere within the reported accuracy. Now, the second thing, um, which is way more important when you're trying to optimize something. For example, in our case, we're measuring drivetrain friction and we're measuring the power loss. Uh, we're interested more into the repeatability rather than into accuracy. Repeatability in its own is a measure of the ability of the method or an instrument to generate a similar result for multiple preparations of the same sample. What that means, every time you put the same weight on your scale, you want to see the same number. And if you change that weight, let's say you add a little bit more weight or you reduce some of the weight, uh, you want to see the difference in that reading. And that, at the end, actually goes up to the repeatability and not so much to the accuracy. So, going back to our drivetrain friction, if we want to uh, accurately compare the differences at the different setups, it's up to the repeatability of the measurement and not about the absolute accuracy. So what is the repeatability of our measurements? Um, we've done some of the internal testing uh, at five different testing conditions. We changed the power output, we changed the derailleur cage, and we changed the gear ratios. And each of those setups was repeated twice under identical conditions. By identical conditions, I mean at the same time after the launch uh, with the same temperature and the same cadence, same power. And what we found out that our device is able to produce very uh, repeatable measurements as the average error when we were repeating the measurements twice in the same conditions was ranging somewhere between 0 0.05 and 0 0.01 watt, which is a very, very marginal error. So how our device looks like, it was completely bespoke made for this purpose only. It's not something you can buy in a shop um, and it's built with some of the key elements. The main one, which is push, uh, propelling the entire movement is a very powerful servo motor that has a, an ability to produce variable angular velocity. And this is very important when you want to mimic real world pedaling conditions, not having just constant velocity of the uh, pedal cycle. Now, very important are two bespoke make torque transducers. Again, those were specifically calibrated and modified for this application only. So it's very important that to know that this is again not something that you can read on the internet and just interpret the data from a data sheet. This was modified to suit exactly this application with a different range of measurement as it's normally reported under the same serial number of the transducers. 
At the end, we have a magnetic brake. Um, Again, this magnetic brake needs to have a very high resolution rate so you can to produce variable braking. I was mentioning before uh, variable angular velocity, but it's also up to the varying torque. So if you want to change um, the torque uh, reading, well, not the torque reading, but the torque put into the crank, it has to be controlled with the brake. And this was programmed and synchronized with the, with the servo motor so we can really mimic the real paddling conditions. Um, there are two other options. One is that we can change the bottom bracket standards, so we can compare different standards and find which one's best. And all of those uh, bottom bracket standards also allow us to change the bearings. An important note is also that we can vary the chain line, so basically without changing the gear ratio, we can see what's the effect of the lateral displacement of the chain and how that affects the frictional readings. So I've mentioned the bespoke torque transducers. They were made by sensor technology specifically for this purpose and have three different um, uh, informations that are important for these applications. We've talked about the accuracy, not as important, albeit it's still 0.1% of the full scale of measurements. But more importantly, even if we would do just two sample measurements, we would get a repeatability of 0.05%. We also can detect um, changes that go somewhere between 0.01%. Um, uh, basically, sensitivity speaks about what's the smallest difference that we can detect. So a lot more than what's required in our application. So those sensors were really the best choice for uh, our device. Um, there are several aspects how we can further improve the repeatability, not just by the sensor itself. There are some mechanical modifications that we can do. For example, those transducers that we're using, they have an inside temperature sensor at the shaft. Um, because each transducer could be affected by the temperature itself because of the uh, material that's uh, measuring the bend. And um, the sensors that we have have a platinum temperature sensor, so basically we can compensate for any changes that would uh, occur only due to the temperature. A very important note is that we have performed an inline synchronized calibration of both transducers one to another. So we have two bespoke uh, made transducers and we've calibrated one to another. So even if there would be an error to the accuracy, it would be the same error on both sensors. So um, not, it would not really affect our readings. A very important thing to know is when we're reporting accuracy and repeatability, sensitivity, it only goes up to one value, one sample measured. However, because paddling is a dynamic condition, we can record several thousand points. <clears throat> Normally, we are recording around um, between 30 and 60 seconds, and then we repeat those measurements two or three times and take the average. First, we take the average of the all thousand measurements done uh, in those 30 to 60 seconds, and at the end, we also average the three measurement slots. So this really gives a very repeatable value when you're comparing the same set over and over again. An important aspect to improve the repeatability and the accuracy itself is a custom written driver to increase the sampling rate of the angular position. Because we're essentially measuring the power, um, and power is a result of torque and angular velocity, it's very important to have a high resolution rate to measure the, uh, the, the angular velocity uh, very precisely. Um, we have done uh, all, the measure, all the measures that were required by the manufacturers of transducers to get the most repeatable and accurate measurements. So we used a custom-made um, couplings that have metal elastic discs, discs, which make any potential error of the measurement completely repeatable. So even though some suggest rubber um, couplings, those could produce unrepeatable measurements. The couplings that we use have a uh, elast metal elastic discs. All the, all, both transducers, both at the rear and at the front, <clears throat> have been connected via elastic steel strap to allow some of the degree of the movement and not preventing any rubbing. And this just adds to the, uh, uh, the accuracy and the repeatability of the measurements that we are performing. 
So to conclude with, our device is a valid and repeatable tool to compare the drivetrain frictional losses at different setups with a margin of 0.05 watts. This at the end basically means that we can accurately detect marginal differences in various setups. And this will allow us in the future to make more material like this, where we're going to be presenting results on um, different derailleur cages, on chain lubrication and any other modifications to the drivetrain to reduce the friction. So stay tuned, follow our channel and frequently visit our website to see if there's any new products coming out as a result of this, uh, of this device.